Guest joining us is Chris Harris, a nuclear expert. Uh, today we're going to post up some interesting articles. The in Nuclear Regulatory Commission, NRC, are going to be posting up information over the next few weeks, apparently updating earthquake hazards at U.S. nuclear plants. Uh, I'm not sure how they're going to spin this, but I think it's well over 35 to 40 percent of all the plants are within strike distance of a, of a nuclear uh, danger, uh, hazard of, of a geologically up, uh, you know, active area like New Madrid, Diablo Canyon, etc., right across the country. And I think that we're, you know, we're fooling ourselves that the NRC is going to do anything substantial. And I, let's talk about the three or four or five things that they could do to remediate these plants to reduce the danger, even if they don't actually get rid of the old technology, and what and why will they not do them? So, oh, Dr. Bill, well, you know, we are just talking about what you could do. Well, I'll tell you what we do that's not a great idea. All right? We try to make one piece of equipment uh, handle every single different kind of a condition that may, may arise. And for that, I'm saying maybe... Maybe the diesel generators at Fukushima and at the U.S. plants are just fine against the seismic event alone. But when you combine that with a tsunami, we found that they were woefully inadequate. So, right. you know, one of the things I think is instead of uh, putting all our eggs in one basket and saying that this particular set is robust against a variety of different potential assaults and hazards, you might want to consider having another set of diesel generators, very expensive, by the way, that is great for floods, and, and it's designed to handle a flood. It can be completely Yeah, maybe at a higher, uh, like inland at Fukushima, just having it a half a mile or a couple of miles in, and at a higher altitude, so it's less likely to get swamped. Uh, the same way here is we have a number of plants that are actually, their diesel generators are, be are below the high water mark, which, like, that's mind-boggling that that's stupid, that you'd have diesel backup generators for nuclear reactors so it won't go China syndrome, that are below the high water mark. Well, it's been uh, historically they've been lucky, I guess. You know, but now we're seeing perhaps, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, it's uh, probably luck may run out. You know, and this is the yeah, it's a, it's why. A, why it's a, like well, a f it's nuclear, uh, it's nuclear roulette. You know, we spin the nuclear fuel bundle and see if you come up with an empty or full chamber. <laughs> well, it seems the nuclear. Uh, you always lose at that. <laughs> you yeah, you're going to lose. You just have to do it how many times you spin. Uh, what are the groundwater plans now at Fukushima? What's going on there? Well, they are they are beginning to pump water. Remember, there was something called the, the well that they were pumping to limit or minimize the flow of the underground aquifer into uh, the basements, or the, what they call them basements, actually, it's into the buildings of all the Fukushima plants, units one through four. And try to get that and pump it into a clean spot, and and uh, which are a new tank speed. That's a big project, and so they're going to store all this water somehow, to test it, and then eventually release it because it shouldn't be contaminated since it's coming from upstream of the plant. But you won't know for sure unless it's uh, 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 tested. Except that you know we know that the, uh, plenty of uh, radioactive material was also scattered all over the plant. So there's going to be some some traces of uh, activity in the water that's pumped upstream. This is a huge project, but still, uh, before they release it, they seems that uh, TEPCO has finalized a deal with the fishermen, the local fishermen, to say that uh, they're going to have an independent look at what is being released into their fishing waters before uh, TEPCO could release it. And uh, so that looks like it's going to happen. Yeah, but well, what are they going to release? Uh, they weren't filtering out their... Their water filtration system had never filtered out strontium and cesium-137. <clears throat> so, I mean, uh, to me, this is putting flowers on the grave. <laughs> you know, what are they doing? Uh, you I know. wonder what kind of deal they made with the fishermen. <clears throat> is this some kind of a strong-arm tactic they did? I don't know. Yeah. Well, to me, it's like, as I say, flowers on the grave. It's saying, yes, we'll release radiation, but we want you to know what it is and certify it okay before we make your fish radioactive, and then we'll make sure the Japanese people are on side with lots of media push to say, keep eating Fukushima, it's your national duty. That's the craziness of the Japanese government and the way the people are being browbeaten by these uh, shogun-like tactics on the Japanese people, which I find very reprehensible. Right, and it says right here, groundwater pumped through 
out of the wells will be first stored in the tank, which is going to be an enormous thing, and more tanks, to check the contamination level. And after safety water is confirmed by analysis, which is expected to take a month, yeah. FDO will start releasing the water into the... Into yeah, the- it's, it's, it's a flowers in the grave. The other thing is the advanced liquid processing system. You have some updates on that from Tokyo Electric. What's going on there? Uh, well, they're going to try to start one of their units. Uh, I, uh, I wasn't, uh, well, well, first, well, first of all, let's just go right to the, the other one. They're going to test a filtered fence. Remember we talked about the hardened fence system right. that, was, that was designed to alleviate the pressure of an accident so that you don't explode the payment, which uh, latest findings are showing that, let's say, just the unit two, for instance, uh, just where we said it was, too, the downcomer uh, areas into the forest uh, are pretty much damaged to the point where, uh, you know, uh, they, they released all kinds of material. So, um, and of course, we knew that right away uh, when uh, you and I were looking at the data years ago because we saw the pressure rise, we saw the sudden drop, we still saw the pressure in the, in the uh, reactor vessel. So we knew right away that it was the containment that was broken, and, you know, it turns out we were right. But here, uh, and that was broken, by the way, before the tsunami struck. So reactor number one, the containment was lost already. And there are a number of other reactors that had containment damage done on five different sites in northern Japan. And if another major quake strikes, we're going to have not just Fukushima, but at least another half dozen or so nuclear reactor sites all losing radiation and going China syndrome. Uh, well, right. Well, one of the, so one of the plants they want to do is they want to put this hardened vent that everybody else in the industry that they recommended, and right. uh, they, you know, they cheaped out and didn't do it, and so that's a hard invent for venting the hydrogen that's created by the, yeah. So in other words, they didn't want to put they want to put a faux engineering solution, which means it looks like a vent, smells like a vent, but it's not a vent. Exactly. Now it's a vent vent. <laughs> put it that way. They but want to make a vent that the- actually is a vent. I mean, how radical to actually put a piece of, of nuclear technology in that actually works rather than just as like a faux or a cartoon version of what a vent should be. Yeah, well, it's it's not a new it's not a new concept. It's, it's been done, and they, it's radical, they failed to do it. <laughs> yeah, well, so they they're installing one on Kasha. They say it now Kasha was actually taro plant. That's uh, that's one of the plants that they're well, just testing it on. It goes along with the logic that the Japanese government will give homes to new pregnant mothers free if you'll just apply to Fukushima. Japanese government, we give you home free because you're pregnant. No problem. You come back here. Come back to Fukushima. Make everybody else not worry. If you got baby, we give you home. No kidding. TEPCO has uh, tabulated... Uh Cost eighty-seven billion dollars worth of replacement power from the uh, from all the nuclear plants being shut down, and to those ends, they're trying to start the Sunday nuclear plant. Uh, well, in, the, and and there was, there was one company in Bakken, uh, in North Dakota, that we could have supplied enough gas for the entire nuclear reactors. Just switch them over. It could have been done over two years ago. It would have taken maybe two or three months to do so. All these other nuclear reactors should have been switched over along these areas that are dangerous, the coastal fault line zones. All of them, 55 reactor sites, could have been switched over to natu- liquefied natural gas, LNG. We had the tankers, we had the gas, we could have delivered to them, we had, could have made a long-term contract, uh, give them a locked-in price so they don't get, doesn't go crazy. Uh, it would basically make Japan have lots of power, but be a nuclear-free zone. Well, why would you put nuclear reactors in fault lines to zombie tsunami zones unless you wanted a disaster. It's like uh, tightrope walking without a pole. It's like uh, base jumping without a bungee cord. <laughs> it's the same class, isn't it? Hard to believe, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we'll have more information <laughs> when we come back. Yeah, absolutely, back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, Chris... Let's get into some of the stuff about the nuclear hazards. Uh, this data that's going to be operated, if they uh, test the site and say, well, it's certified to take a 4.2 quake, what are they going to do when they find out the chances, say, over a 20-year period of 6.8 are virtually 100% or 90%? They can't sweep it under the rug, can they? So what do you think will happen? Uh, not, not for long, no. So let's go over this <laughs> issue. I... Okay, yeah. 
I, I just just remember, you know, one thing, the, out, the, out, uh, the, the the last uh, chairman of the NRC, Vasco, uh, yes. ordered that every every company put a, come up with a, a re-evaluation of the potential for a seismic event, including the magnitude and, and what kind of uh, threat it would pose to the plant. That was a newer, updated model than the original ones that were done in the 1960s and, you know, maybe even before then that everyone was using. And now these reports are coming in. And uh, I was going to say, just on Gasco's behalf, he did a, I think he did a good thing, and he did a good thing by ordering that. So uh, kudos to him. But anyway, um, the, the new reports, there will be 60, so far there's 60 of them coming to the NRC. This was as of, uh, like, April 8th. And so uh, they get a month to review these reports and come up with an evalu- their own evaluation. And then we're going to start, then they promise that they'll be transparent and post them on their website, the Japan's Lesson Learned website, the NRC. So I'm going to look at those, of course, and, and let you know what, what, I, what I think. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if many plants that were designed for a basis, what they are, 4.2 or 4.6, in like, just like North Anna in uh, Mineral, Virginia, is now going to say, hey, you know something? We did a reanalysis, and now maybe we maybe we can get a 6.8, and uh, we didn't count on that. So I think there's going to be some surprises. Some some plants will be remain unchanged, but some plants are going to find themselves. Uh, now what do you do? And so uh, I think that's going to create some uh, havoc and chaos in, in the industry if we decide to uh, uh, keep them running again. So well, we uh, have we have first energy. Uh, and these other reactors, and they're building reactors in South Carolina, Georgia, and also other plants in China and elsewhere. We have Ozotom in Russia. They've sold eight reactors, a bunch of them to South Africa and other countries, eight other countries, actually, over the next six or eight years. Uh, the proliferation of what I call old-style, stupid nuclear reactor designs is just ridiculous. Uh, even moving towards, say, the pebble bed-style reactors that just cool themselves off is better. Ultimately, we want to get to nuclear fusion energy. And people should realize that nuclear, in a safe form, has to be part of the future. But people don't understand this, and I keep on repeating it. You can't use abiotic fuel forever and burn up oxygen, which is supplied at a limited rate by converting carbon dioxide in the oceans, upper 30 feet, called a benthic layer, and the forests uh, to convert back into oxygen from carbon dioxide. We don't have a peak carbon dioxide problem. We have a sick planet that's like a chronic lung disease who can't convert at an adequate rate to deal with the rate of growth of our industry. So we have to be able to produce power from other means. And these other ones that generate power, solar and wind, generate unbelievably dirty electricity that makes people really sick and animals sick and disorients the bees. And the bees aren't finding their way back, so you better get used to the idea of having gruel because anything that tastes good won't be available because the bees are not going to be able to pollinate. So people need to realize peak oxygen is the issue, not peak, not carbon dioxide, not peak energy. That's another pile of garbage. It's the level at which your built planet can actually convert carbon dioxide back to oxygen. It's like the lungs of the planet have chronic lung disease. Advanced nuclear fusion, stable and safer, older style reactors, but the newer versions of them, like the pebble bed reactors, reactors that don't vent off radiation, reactors that have stable materials that can be exported off-site to be stored permanently in safe facilities, but these problems have never been breached. And I don't see any move by either the NRC or the IAEA to address them. Uh, I think we're heading toward a cataclysm. And when we hit the re- we hit the what I call the energy nidus, where all of a sudden the world concentration of oxygen starts to really head south, and it could happen as we head into an ice age, because the ice age is going to kill a lot of the ability to convert carbon dioxide to oxygen. Uh, and you add that to industry, you add that to a global cataclysm, including the dissolution of the ozone layer. If there's a major uh, dissolution of the ozone layer, you can kill the benthic layer of the oceans and many plants. The lungs of the Earth will get considerably worse, and we're going to really be up against it. Human beings will only be able to live and breathe and have any kind of vitality in a domed city. That's where we're going. Well, uh, if you know, let's just, let me just go back to... Uh the assessments that are happening for the seismic uh, assessments and how, how that would uh, cost a lot of money. Now, some some, some of the plants, like I, I have a feeling that there are going to be several of them that, that meet this criteria, that, the, that they are not designed to handle the projected new projections for a seismic event 
And on top of that, they're going to have three years to make plant modifications to um, uh, uh, to their plant to reinforce existing safety significant equipment or by adding equipment. Three, a lot of things can happen in three years. So, uh, and, and, but yet, yet on the other hand, they, they have to do something, and that's that's the stuff that's going to cost a lot of money. And that goes back. Yeah. to that's a I, I don't see how they're going to. I don't know how they're going to spin it. I mean, let's, what are the two or three things they could do? Uh, you mentioned the the, uh, the Taurus and, and putting in a real thing rather than a faux one. Uh, the storage of material on site, either in casks or the latest cooling pools, is dangerous. Right. Especially if you talk about a war. I mean, if you want to have a war with somebody, you just have to have, as I said to uh, Tom Daschle, senator, back in October of 2001, I said, we, I was one of the doctors taking care of employees at Rocky Flats. I said, look, all you'd have to do is for less than twenty thousand dollars get an APC, crash through the chain link fence, go in there with conventional explosives and blow up a pad full of liquid plutonium and other high grade isotopes like americium, and uh, your entire western United States is a radioactive dead zone. And they closed up all the airports locally from Vail, etc. I said, you know, you guys are not addressing the fact that you don't realize that every one of these nuclear plants is the primary site if you want true terrorism. You'd hit something like Indian Point if you wanted to hit New York. You wouldn't hit the World Trade Center towers. You'd hit the nuclear sure. reactors, right? And, and all yeah, and right. most of these plants have 50 to 60 years of nuclear material on site in either casks that are not designed to, to last a long time or uh, liquid cooling systems that require a lot of maintenance and a lot of critical things to be able to withstand earthquakes, terrorism, power outages. I mean, they had a few keystrokes in Yuma, Arizona, September... Uh, 8th, 2011, and the power outage swept through and docked with power for about 7 million people in Southern California and Baja, California, and it burnt out these two steam turbines at San Onofre, 12 miles as a crow flies from where I live and have my studio in Southern California, so it's a Pendulum Marine Corps base. Burned out two $600 million brand new spanking Mitsubishi Heavy Industries steam turbines because yep. they changed the engineering in on these yeah. generators. By like for like, when they really shouldn't have put more steam turbine tubes because they vibrated against each other and had massive leaks of radiation, which my detectors went up when it went hot to five times background for almost a week. So guess what, guys? You're not doing your job, and you can't swank this one. This is really serious, and all of the reactors near strike zones of earthquakes, which are going to increase dramatically, you need to get those reactors switched to natural gas, you need to get backup generators at a higher level behind them. You need to get that nuclear material off-site. You need to have real uh, systems for venting, which they don't, need, like the faux one they had in Japan. <laughs> I can't believe they actually put faux engineering to make it look like they actually had engineering parts there when they don't work. That's why there was a big argument over whether they should release the hydrogen or not because they're generating hydrogen that was going to blow up the Taurus. These people are crazy, and they want to lie to us, and we're not stupid. And Dr. Deagle has kind of dissected through this for three years. That's why I'm bringing out these books that covers the nuclear engineering, the remediation that needs to be done to stop this weeping nuclear sore on the whole planet. And it's only a warning for what's going to come, which is hitting the Bashir reactor. Earthquakes which are certain to happen, like the one a year after the Chilean earthquake, we hit the tsunami and earthquake that struck Japan. So I think this big earthquake of Chile is a warning that within a year, we're going to have a major quake strike Japan again. Hey, Dr. Bill, since I like to be a little bit of a bad boy in, in, in the industry and, and raise a little havoc myself, right. uh, because I know what I know what should be done and all, I just got to. Right. I'm going to ask the question. I'm going to leave leave, leave, the, leave the audience with this one question, and other people don't understand. That would be: Does the new seismic uh, a seismic activity report? Shoot a hole in the license renewal process that the other plans absolutely. Are going all right, it that's should. Good. That's from an inside bank. You know, good question right there. I think the answer to that one should be a big, broad yes with a megaphone, because I don't see how you can release these plants that will not withstand earthquakes that are virtual certainty over the next 5, 10, or 20 years. Very good point, Chris. This will all be posted up today. Amazing. I'll be on hour number three as a guest tonight. We'll discuss and expand on this and many other topics. Rents, hour three tonight. 9 to 10 p.m. Pacific time on the Reds Network. Back tomorrow with Firing Line. Get your questions in. Our wellness, preparedness, civil defense, martial law with John Moore and Ann Morrison.